Yeah, we back. We back with another interesting video. Now, today's video is going to be a follow up video to when I dropped sometime last week or two weeks ago entitled The Failed Divester to Pro Black Pipeline. And in this video, the subject of today's video is going to be a lady who you could classify in that category, right? Somebody who, quote unquote, played in the snow, but now she wants to come home. She wants a black man. She only got eyes for the black man now. But now we're going to hear her reasoning. She's going to explain why she has come to this realization. And all jokes aside, I'm going to keep it a stack. She said a few good things, man. She said some good things that I resonated with. So today we're going to review a video that she put out. But before we get into that, we're going to go to her social media where she made this post earlier today. Take a look up on the screen. She said this. Interracial dating is not a universal experience that everyone should be open to doing and i find it odd that whenever a black woman voices her disinterest in doing so she is bombarded with other black women trying to convince her to do it it's a very odd response she went on to say you express that as a black woman you only desire to date black men and procreate with black men and here come the divestors to remind you that black men hate us like girl please relax now she opened a very interesting conversation Right, because I think I mentioned it before on my channel, but these women, some of these women who run around with the Europeans, they have a strange psychology. They function somewhat as saleswomen or marketing strategists for the white community. You know, they go around door to door, knocking on doors like Jehovah Witnesses, talking about, girl, you gotta get with the white man, girl, get you a white man, girl, you gotta get with the white folks, girl, you gotta get with the white man. You know what I mean? So it's very interesting that women are now having this conversation amongst themselves. Now, let's continue. Scotty Beam chimed into the conversation. Shout out to Scotty Beam, you know, beautiful black woman. I don't care what none of y'all boys say. Scotty Beam, man, shout out to Scotty Beam. She said this The amount of times the interracial girls have tried to convince me to date whites is insane. Now, I just got to say, I just got to make an announcement to the so called divestors, the swirlers, the women that be playing in the snow. Scotty Beam does not share your struggle, okay? Scotty Beam can get any black man that she wants. You know what I mean? When you look at Scotty Bean, you see that she has those elite West Central African genetics, okay? A white man don't even know what to do with that shit. You know, a white man don't even know what to do with that. You see, when it comes to, you know, divesting, swirling, playing in the snow, that's for y'all women with them struggle genetics, okay? Scotty Bean, she don't got to do that. She don't got to do that shit, man. She don't got to do that. She got them elite West Central African genetics like our foremothers, you know what I mean? She could have been she could have been the wife to an ancient African king in the year 1644. Look at Scotty B. Man, listen, y'all got y'all got to relax, man. Y'all got to relax. Take that Jehovah witness knocking on doors trying to sell trying to be a saleswoman for the white man. Take that to somebody else. Leave Scotty B alone, man. You know what I'm saying? Leave Scotty B alone. Let's good see you. This lady said, "We need to stop acting like dating out is automatically dating up." That's when it starts to get anti-black quick that's a fact man i think i mentioned it before man the average citizen in america regardless of race background you know religious orientation whatever makes like 40 50 thousand dollars a year man works a regular job drives you know a honda from 2006 don't really got a trust fund don't really got a lot of money in savings but let the divestors tell it the average white man he owns 15 mcdonald's franchises you know he got 10 million dollars in real estate he got a Rolls Royce Phantom that he drives around. That, that's his everyday car. The Rolls Royce, that's the everyday car. You know, the Lamborghini truck, you know, that's his fancy car. But the Rolls Royce Phantom, that's his everyday driver. You know what I mean? When his father dies, he's going to inherit $70 million off rip. Man, let the divestors tell it every single white man got $10 million, you know what I mean, in a checking account. But that's not the case, man. The average American citizen is a bum. <laughs> that's the, f the average American citizen is a bum. And just like all societies around the world, the vast majority of wealth is concentrated in the hands of a few families. You know, a handful of families got all the money. That, that's really what it is in most countries around the world. A handful of families got all the money and everybody else is just getting by. You know what I mean? They just getting by. But anyway, let's continue. This lady said, don't let you say no thanks. They'll start calling you 17th century slurs. That's a fact, man. That's a fact. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. If you are a black woman and you say, listen, I ain't really trying to, you know, jump in bed with the white man. I'm trying to I'm trying to kick it with the black man. These women who be loving the white folks, they're going to start insulting other black women. And later on in the video that I'm going to be reacting to, the lady actually mentions that. Right. So I'm happy that women are having these conversations amongst themselves and also out in the open as well. Let's continue. This lady said, 
I'm not against interracial dating, it's your own prerogative, but treating it as a stepping stone rather than just genuinely getting to know people is definitely giving desperate and insecure. And most people can spot those issues from a mile away. That's a fact. That's a fact. Man, listen, I told y'all boys, it's some intelligent black women out here, man. Listen, that's why, like I said, I only deal with black women. A certain a certain segment of black women, though. Only. You know, I, I can't do anything else, man. It's just personal preference, brothers. You know what I mean? It's just personal preference. You feel me? Let's continue. This lady said, I agree. If you like somebody outside of your race, that's cool. But do not push it onto other black women as if non-black men are a better alternative. It is weird. I'm not against interracial dating. Do you. But going out of your way to specifically date outside your race is weird. That's a fact, man. That's a fact. Let's continue. This lady said, I'm happily married to my black husband. I felt the same. I wanted a partner that gets me without the constant need to educate and code switch. That sounded exhausting and I wanted no part of it. I feel you. This lady said, I want to call my man daddy and I can't do that with a white man. <laughs> man, listen, let's continue. <laughs> let's continue. This lady said, they think they're so revolutionary and I hate it. Man, that's a fact, man. These women always trying to convince other black women to play in the snow with them. I don't know why. I don't know why they do that, man. Why do they function as Jehovah Witnesses try to spread the gospel of sleeping with a white man? Like, I, I don't get it, bro. I don't get it. They act like they're on the cutting edge of technology. Like, no, you're not. You're, you're, you're not. You're not. You know, your foremothers, your foremothers went through that. So you don't have to go through that. You feel me? Let's get to you. This lady said interracial warriors are odd because it's like they want you to hate black men so you can date outside your race like sorry baby i love black men and that's that amen baby girl amen let's get to you this lady said i'm getting tired of being told that i'm limiting myself by not dating people that i'm not attracted to is it a crime to not want to date interracially man i'm telling you man ah man i love the fact that this conversation is happening we need to talk about the Jehovah Witness divestors, you know what I mean? Trying to spread the gospel of sleeping with white folks. <laughs> you know what I mean? We need to talk about it, man. And it's really pathetic because it's very one sided because I don't see white men or white women going around trying to spread the gospel of getting with us. So why do we go around trying to spread the gospel of getting with them? You know, it's uh, you know, it's giving inferiority. You know, it's it's definitely giving inferiority. It's definitely giving uh, you know, I hate myself. It's definitely giving you know, worship the white man. You know, it's, that, that's what it's giving. You know, that's the energy it's giving. Let's get to you. Now, I'm gonna jump into this lady's video, uh, basically going deeper on this subject, and I'm gonna come in and out my commentary. Let's go. The last episode, I was talking about black women's experience of dating, and in that episode, I talked mainly about dating black men. Well. The comment section to that video was very eye-opening and quite frankly alarming. I received a lot of comments from black women especially saying things along the lines of stop being so race loyal and date other men if you're not you're playing yourself. You black women who are so race loyal are only playing you in the end and you look silly in doing so because black men don't even want you like that. Y'all are so loyal to men who don't even like y'all or want y'all back and it's silly to watch. I let black men go a long time ago and those y'all who still won't let them go are stupid and silly. Like damn girl! <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. All black men are good for is making baby mamas and not paying bills. Shit like that. And it was like, okay, y'all, like, let's relax. <laughs> oh, man. That's what I had mentioned earlier. That's what I call the divestor Jehovah Witnesses. You know what I mean? They act like you just said some blasphemy whenever you say things like, I just want to be with a black man. I just want to have black children. I just want to spend the holidays with my black family. They going to treat it like you just said something blasphemous against the lord and savior himself you know what i mean that's how they act because i'm telling you they really act like jehovah witnesses or somebody trying to sell you a pyramid scheme or a ponzi scheme bro like you ever seen somebody trying to sell you a pyramid scheme they pull up on you like listen man listen you want to make boatloads of money while you sleep while you eat while you watch your favorite tv show listen i gotta offer a once in a lifetime offer man listen it's simple for a low entry fee you can make a large fortune that's how they act bro <laughs> That's how they act that I vested Jehovah Witnesses. Let's get to you. For this show, I want to address those black women or who I'm pretty sure are divesters. Now, while I respect that you are entitled to your own opinion and moving how you want to move in your dating life, what I do not respect at all is projecting what you're doing onto other black women who don't want to do that. Baby, if you don't want to date black men anymore, that's your business. But to resort to calling black women who do goofy or silly or dumb, 
Let's unclench that booty hole, girl, and breathe. Might be more serious reasons of why I can't do it. And trust me, I've thought about it thoroughly and long and hard. First shallow reason, non-black men don't really do it for me. Don't get me wrong. Some are very attractive. I get it. I can see it. I can see the attraction. I can, I can see it. But when I think about, like, intimacy with a non-black man, my coochie dries up. I can't. Ooh. Mm-mm. <laughs> Some non black men, they fine, they cute in the face. I get it, but I don't want to see anything else neck down. No, thank you. If I'm being frank, I do not find non black pain as attractive. I just don't. Baby, if you pull out a naked mole rat, I am screaming and running home. I don't find it cute, babes. I tell you. I've entertained non black men like a small handful in my lifetime, and every time I did it, my interest was only to a very shallow point because, baby, I cannot see us doing anything for real, for real. Don't tee no shade to those non black men do it for. I'm just not one of them. And I've tried, I've thought about it, and I've tried. I just can't get past that. Now, I told y'all brothers, man. I told y'all brothers. The failed divester to the pro black pipeline. I don't know what it is, man. I don't know what it is. Um, like why can't they just start out pro black from the beginning? Like why do they have to go through the whole, you know, playing in the snow and then they want to come back home? I don't know, man. I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it, but whatever. Let's get to you. Mm -mm. Another shallow reason why I can't do interracial is because I want my partner to get certain things about black culture. I want them to get certain cultural references and like, I want them to just get it you know i want my partner to have the, the swag of black culture like we are so swagged out i want you to have that and but then the flip side of that is dating men who are very akin to their own culture and i'm not getting with no scary wearing ass white man i'm not getting with no man that wear lacoste all the goddamn time i'm not doing that no thanks i'm not getting with no khaki bermuda short wearing ass man no thank you baby Man, listen, I told y'all boys, man, the black man just got a certain energy about him. The black man just has a certain je ne sais quoi about him. You know, we just different, brothers. You know, we, we just different, man. You know, we just different. Going back to what I said about Scotty Beam. Could you see Scotty Beam, a woman like Scotty Beam, built like Scotty Beam, looking like Scotty Beam? Could you see her with anybody else but a black man? Like, it wouldn't look right. You know, she got to be with the original man. You know, the black man, the black African man. You know, it, we, we just different. You know what I'm saying? Black man is different, man. Let's get to you. Amazing. And this one pertains specifically to white men because i have grown up in this society as a darker skinned black woman i have a very hard time offering any kind of empathy towards white men it doesn't work up here it stops because you're at the top of the privileged totem pole what do i look like someone towards the bottom offering you empathy to me turner but the, but the thing about it is is in a romantic partnership and space Empathy is very important. I don't have that for y'all though. So the idea of my white partner coming home after a long day of work and complaining, what the fuck are you complaining for? You don't suck it the fuck up. I don't I don't I don't have that for them. I don't want to hear about your problems and your troubles, Jimmy Jimerson. I don't give a shit. For real. Honestly, I don't. I don't. I don't. Alright, we back. Now the reason why I don't play in the snow is because imagine sitting at the Thanksgiving dinner table, you know, trying to kick it with her father. I don't want to kick it with her father. Fuck your father. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why I can't do it, man. I can't do it. You know, I just I just can't do it. I'm going to have to shake hands and, you know, be cool with your brothers. You know, your brother probably voted for Trump. You know, your brother probably listened to Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens. Man, fuck your people. I just don't got the connection or the cultural love or or any empathy for them folks, man. So, you know, I just stay in my lane, man. I just stay in my lane. And as somebody who grew up in an environment where both my parents been married for decades, aunts and uncles married for decades, my grandparents was married since goddamn Harry Truman was the president of the United States. I've seen that when a man marries a woman, you also have to, you're not just marrying that woman, right? You're also connecting with that woman's family. So, you know, you got to make a connection with the, with the father and the uncles and the brothers and the cousins. And I just don't see myself doing that. I just don't see myself at the Thanksgiving dinner table talking politics or talking uh, current events, you know, with a bunch of white men. I just I, I just don't see it. You know, I, I just don't see that in the cards for me. And like I mentioned before, every single legendary black man historically throughout the ages that I looked up to, he had a black woman on his arm. You know, Dessaline, Christophe, Toussaint Louverture, Michael Max, Marcus Garvey, Martin Delaney. But like I said before, 
they had a certain archetype of black women. They had a certain type of black women they was dealing with. They wasn't dealing with the failed divesters and the failed swirlers. No, they was dealing with the intelligent elite five star black woman. That diamond, you know, that bust down fifty thousand dollar Rolex, not that fourteen ninety nine bullshit off Amazon. No, they was dealing with the real authentic jewelry, man. That's the only type of woman you should be dealing with, brothers. And on top of that, when you look around the world at the powerful men that control society, they are usually with the woman of their own culture, the woman of their own background, the woman of their similar religious background, cultural background, whatever. So, you know, when you see what the powerful men are doing, why? who am I to change tradition? Who am I to go against tradition? You know what I mean? Who am I? You know, what do I look like? My parents done bust their ass for decades and I'm going to break open the safe and share the family treasures with an outsider. I just don't see myself doing it, man. As a black man, I'm very blessed. As a black man, I'm very blessed. But like I said before, I'm not trying to share those treasures with a failed divester or a failed swirler. If she playing in the snow, listen, I don't got nothing to do with that. If she playing in the snow, I don't want nothing to do with that. You know, we only trying to deal with that exclusive five star top shelf type of woman, man. We're not trying to deal with the clearance rack, 95 percent off. Everything must go. Nah, we, we they could keep that. You feel me? They could keep that. Let's continue here. I feel safest around us. I am more inclined to show up and be myself around us. Me. In any setting where I'm the minority, I'm holding myself back. And I don't want to have to do that in my relationship. I don't want to have to watch what I say around my person. I don't want to worry about that. I don't want to have to worry about saying things and then explaining what it means because you don't get it. I don't want to do that ad nauseum. But I think the most important reason why interracial dating is not for me is because I want black children. Full stop. Man, now I think we're breaking down the psychology of the failed divester to the pro-black pipeline. I think we're breaking down the psychology, brothers. Like I said before, man, the black man is just different, man. The black man got a certain energy, a certain aura, a certain vibe about him. The black man is, you know, he's charismatic. He's energetic. He's magnetic. You know what I mean? These women can say whatever they want, but deep down inside, they, they know they love the black man. They know they love the black man. You know, they listen, deep down inside, they love the black man. But like I said before, brothers, if she played in the snow, she cannot come back home. <laughs> If she, yo, that's going to be on a t-shirt. If she played in the snow, she cannot come back home. Listen, that's going to be my first piece of merchandise. If she played in the snow, then she cannot come back home. I'm going to make that a song. If she played in the snow, then she cannot come back home. I'm just chilling at the door and I don't answer the phone. <laughs> Listen, man, that's what I'm saying. The black man just different. Look how I just came up with that shit off the top of my head, man. You know, the black man just charismatic with this shit, man. Let's continue that being a black woman is a privilege in the way that I don't have to question who I am or where I belong. I know that. I want to give that to my children. And on a lighter note, baby, I do not want to have kids or even grandkids who are using my picture to validate them being black and being able to say nigga. No, ma'am. I do not want to see my biracial child or grandchild pulling up a picture of me, they black ass mama or grandmama saying, see, I am black. So I can't say nigga. I think the fuck not <laughs> hey that reminds me of a clip i seen in the past few days i don't know if this guy's a ball player or whatever but this dude i'm gonna play the clip i'm gonna play the clip run the footage i'll be right back let's just jump right into it are you black explain your blackness uh, you know it's like light skin i'm i'm bright skin Ooh. So oh like, okay above. bright skin i like that i'm above my child's bright skin i'm, I'm above light skin yeah my dad's black he... no I don't want that. And so as a black woman who does not wish to date interracially, one thing that really rubs me the wrong way is how interracial dating is framed and advertised to black women. What I don't like, though, is when people try to, like, pressure us into doing it. Where they'll use the fear-mongering tactics of black men date out at this percentage rate compared to y'all. Um, black men aren't choosing y'all as much or... If you only date black men, you're limiting yourself to a smaller amount of people. You'll be single longer. All of those tactics to me are just kind of like, ugh, relax. Because while I understand the number aspect of dating interracially giving you more options of people, this idea that by me not doing that, I'm automatically limiting myself, I don't fully buy it. I just don't. Because if to me, dating non-black men is not my forte and not what I want to do, how would I be then limiting myself by not doing it? If I think that dating outside my race is a form of settling, how would not opening up my options be limiting? 
the way some people advertise black women dating out is as if that's our only hope of ever finding love. And I just can't get jiggy with that. Because while, yes, the black community does have things to still work on, love still exists here. It's not a lost cause to me. And if it means I have to be single for a little bit longer, I'm okay with that and I've made peace with it. I'm not so pressed for partnership that I'm willing to try to force myself to find people that I'm not attracted to attractive. It's not that deep for me. <laughs> Man, now in that section of the video, she started hitting the Jehovah Witnesses in the chest. Like I said, man, these women function as Jehovah Witnesses. Like when the Jehovah Witnesses knock on the door. Run that bag, Good morning. Sorry to disturb you at this godly hour. I have something transformative to share with you. Can I come in for a moment? No, I'm not. I'm not really interested. But what if I told you that I can save you? Nah, man, I'm all right. But no, but listen, listen, listen. Once you try this everything is going to change once you try once you do this the world is going to open up for you nah i'm really I'm, I'm cool man you have to you have to listen to me please give me two minutes of your time what, what, what are you trying to sell me man listen listen girl come here i'm listening i'm listening listen girl once you do this everything is going to be different what is it gotta get you a white man <laughs> bro that's how they act bro that's how they act man these women are used car salesmen. These women are snake oil salesmen. These women are Jehovah Witnesses trying to spread the gospel of the European man. And I'm telling you right now, it's disgusting. And the reason why I say it's disgusting is because it's very one sided. Like I said before, you don't see the other side trying to spread the gospel of getting with us. So why do we try to go around spreading the gospel for free on top of that? I could understand if you were getting paid, you're a marketer, you know, you're a salesperson getting paid on commission, taking money off the top, making a profit, but you're doing it strictly for free. They're doing it for free for the love of the game, man. They're doing it for free. Think about it, bro. They're doing it for free, man, for free. That's why I say it's really disgusting. It's really pathetic, you know, but I'm glad that the women are beginning to have these conversations amongst themselves because we've been having these conversations amongst ourselves, brothers, you know, especially on my channel. But I'm glad that the women are having these conversations amongst themselves and separating themselves from the crowd you know like i said you got to separate the authentic jewelry from the fake counterfeit bullshit jewelry you know what i mean you got to separate the fifty thousand dollar rolex you know submariner you know and then you got to separate the bullshit you know gold-plated bullshit for 10.99 off amazon because we don't want that fake shit we don't want that fake bullshit nah we want the real deal we want the rolex yacht master you feel me we want the richard millie we want the paddock for leap you know, we want that real deal, you know, $40,000, $50,000, $100,000 watch. You know, we, we want the real deal. We don't want the bullshit fake Chinese food jewelry off Canal Street. They can keep that. We want the authentic jewelry. Let's get to you. Productive to me. If black women want to be race loyal, which is a crazy phrase anyway, but if black women want to be race loyal, it is not your job to then try to convince her to not be. Leave her be. And, and the whole race loyal thing is crazy to me because... So many people across races are, and no one's batting an eye. But we're looked at funny for it because some black men aren't. What? I don't see anything wrong with black women wanting to stay at home. And I don't find it productive or even necessary to chastise them or look down on them for wanting to stay at home. Because to a lot of us, there's already enough we have to vet and sift through in dating at home. Not all of us want to also have to worry about, is he a closeted racist? Is he socially aware and, and conscious of what's happening and what it means? Has he addressed his own internalized anti-blackness and, and white supremacist views? If you claim to love and support black women, then support the fact that not all of us are going to be down with dating out. And that's okay. Man, listen, man. I got nothing. I got nothing against what she said, apart from the fact that she is a failed, uh, you know, a failed swirler. Uh, turn pro black, you know, the pro, the failed swirler to the pro black pipeline. Besides that, I got nothing against what she said. I don't think anybody should be chastised for wanting to maintain and uplift and, and enrich your culture and, and your bloodline and your lineage and your ancestry and everything like that. I don't think anybody should be chastised for that, you know, because that's what all people do. Like I said before, I've given the example many times, you know, when you look at you know, the Arabs in my home country, the Jewish communities in my home country, you know, they immigrated to the country a hundred years ago and they've never married outside the culture. You know, they've maintained their they've maintained their culture and bloodline in a country that is almost 100 percent black in a country where damn near all the women are black. The men have never 
married outside the culture. Now, they've definitely had fun outside the culture. They definitely smashed outside the culture, but they've never, you know, when it was time to bust down the check, when it was time to, you know, really take shit serious. Listen, they've never, ever, 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 ever mixed into the population. You know, where damn near the whole country is black. You know what I mean? So that really said something to me. That really uh, said something to me. And no, and I guarantee nobody's chastising them for maintaining and trying to uplift their culture. Nobody's chastising them in their community. So, you know, that happens a lot in our culture, too. The same thing she said, because on the men's side, too, we also have some Jehovah Witnesses trying to go around and preach the gospel of the white woman. You know, y'all boys be trying to, you know, some of y'all boys come into my comment section trying to convince me, Nefakari the Selene, <laughs> you know what I mean, to get a white woman. Listen, y'all, y'all brothers got to relax, man. Y'all brothers, I'm, I'm, I'm a ban you from the channel. You fuck around trying to say that bullshit in the comment section. I'm, I'm a ban you from the channel. You know, you should know better than that. You know, we got to stop that, man. Because that shit is never happening on the other side. When you look at the other side, they're not over here, you know, being Jehovah Witnesses trying to spread the gospel about us on either side. So why are we trying to spread the gospel about them? Who the fuck are they? Why are they so special? You know what I'm saying? Y'all look stupid as hell. Y'all look goofy as hell, man. You know, it's really giving self hate. You know, it's giving self hate. It's giving inferiority. It's giving, you know, skin bleaching. It's giving a whole lot of, it's giving a whole lot. You know, it's giving a whole lot of bullshit. Anyways, man, it's your boy Never Card. That's lean back in the building. Yes, indeed. Cash app up on the screen. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. No, they got Malice intentions, step in the room and I'm feeling attention. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Care for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hourly wage. I got business. This shit is an art and it can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you in court. Run to the check. And I do it for sport Babylon falling I go to the source Packing my luggage And go overseas Shorty be with me And she so at least Shorty be chosen I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence Probably gonna murder me Don't fuck with brands Cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit And you're smacking their faces